Hi guys, welcome to episode 3 of the DSR Ghostwriting Podcast. Episode 3 take 2 uh, concluded with me spilling an entire cup of coffee over my desk and keyboard. Fortunately, it's a Logitech waterproof keyboard. Uh, but if it was one of my mechanical keyboards, I would probably be in a fit of rage at this point. Um, I'm going to continue in this episode, so I'm going I'm to assume no one because the podcast is being broadcasting slash being syndicated for two days, so I don't imagine really anyone is listening yet, but... Uh, my name is Daniel Rosal. I'm a ghostwriter based in Jerusalem. I call myself a ghostwriter, as I explained, and I think in the first episode, because one, um, I think of myself as a small business owner and not as a freelance writer. I think that's an important distinction for really more a mindset, I would say, for full-time uh, writers to have. Uh, secondly, because really what I do is ghostwriting. I have not written any bylined articles in my freelancing career to date, and that's really where I see myself adding value. I have expressly refused bylines on a number of occasions for professional reasons. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a ghostwriter. That's, that's, that's what I see myself doing. I am going to be doing my own uh, guest posting and stuff like that this year a lot more than I have been doing. But I'm, I still don't intend that any writing I do for my clients is going to be published under my name. Um, okay, that's me in a nutshell. Now, in this episode, I'm going to talk about CRMs. Uh, this, you know, the whole focus of this podcast really is technical solutions. Uh, in very basic terms, I'm not pitching this podcast at experts. I'm pitching this at fellow writers, fellow freelancers, uh, fellow small business owners, uh, you know, that are not techies. They probably don't have the budget to hire a technical person to set things up. Uh, and they just want to know what kind of tools that are on the market to help them uh, start slash scale their uh, their business operations. So we talked in the last podcast about setting up uh, you know an internet presence, which is really a combination of getting a domain name um, and finding a hosting provider. I explained the various providers that are there at this level. I say at this level because I neglected to mention stuff like AWS, um, you know Microsoft Azure, uh, hosting options really intended for you know serious uh you know if you're running a software company a SaaS company you you know you're not going to be running the infrastructure on a shared hosting account um but i did give a recommendation for what i will continue to plug this terminology the hidden gem of the hosting world which is reseller hosting uh if you operate like me a number of websites i have about 16 as i keep saying don't ask how i ended up with 16 domain names I can tell you one is one is my personal website, another is my uh is my ghostwriting website, a third is my vanity URL in a dot com. That takes us to three. I have I run a few for family members. Where the where we get to the other the rest of those, who knows? But that's so at this level you really want something called reseller hosting, uh at least or VPS or dedicated. And I talked about that in the last episode. Um I think it's a good tradition good transition, especially because this um this week I've been writing so much about CRMs to to discuss customer relationship management. If you are you know googling recommendations for setting up as a freelancer, I'm sure you'll have heard you'll have come across someone saying you need to get yourself set up in a CRM. Um, I'm not going to go into s- specific CRMs because this is not a plug for any one provider. I will tell you quickly what I use personally at the moment, and I say at the moment in uh, with emphasis, but emphasis. Because I'm very much in a transition away from using my own uh, self-hosted CRM to HubSpot, which I've been using for you know a couple of years at this point. But it's kind of like I'm not enamored by HubSpot. Um, I set up recently on something called Agile CRM. That's agilecrm.com. Um, I have some automation set up, but it's not a great fit, uh, to be honest. There's one thing I'm very unhappy with, and therefore I'm looking for my next uh, my next option. But this isn't like, uh, you know, Salesforce versus Pipedrive versus, uh, you know, Zoho CRM. It, it's not it's not a comparison exercise. I'm simply going to explain to you what, what CRMs are, basically. So if you're a freelance writer, you are, you know, probably in the process of sending out cold emails, prospective emails on an ongoing basis, looking for referrals, looking for work, maybe even trying to gather testimonials from your existing clients. And the obvious, the most simple way to write an email, and ex- excuse me for stating the obvious here, but it's, you know, clearly to go into your, your webmail, your Gmail, or your uh, desktop client, if you're still using that, and write an email on a one-off basis. Um, there are a couple of reasons why it may not be so smart to do that. Number one, um, 
it's manual. So you're probably writing the same thing over and over again. You may you may either write, and I don't I don't recommend this by the way, but you could just have a, a template, a cold a cold prospect template, a warm template, um, and you're sending the verbatim thing and changing a couple of fields like company name, recipient name, and you're hitting the send button. Uh, as I said, I don't recommend doing that because you're going to be perceived as a spammer. If the emails are virtually identical, you do run the risk that your email will be flagged as spam. Um, so you're a spammer and the, you know, the ISPs might, might ident identify you as a spammer. And the second reason is that if you're working with additional resources, i.e. you have a virtual assistant, you may even have a salesperson on your team. Well, that's not going to scale very well. Yes, you can delegate access to your inbox and a lot of services. Certainly in G Suite, that's a functionality. Uh, I believe it's part of the Office 365 uh, world. And just ju just to say as well that I'm using G Suite for years, way back, actually not way back, but when it was called Google Apps, which was, I believe, something like last year. Um, I also use Linux as my desktop operating system. So I'm very much coming at this from the kind of cloud services world. I, I'm not super familiar with Office 365 Outlook and what those uh, what those providers offer. But I can tell you in G Suite, you can certainly delegate email access. You can, of course, store the password in something like LastPass and give your VA access. But those are very, very poor solutions. So if you're looking to work with the salesperson, it's it's much, much better if you have a CRM. Um, so a CRM, basically, Customer Relationship Management is what the acronym stands for. It's less complicated than it sounds, to be honest. At its core, a CRM is really a tool for creating contacts now contacts are i'm using that term generically because based on what stage the prospect is in your sales funnel it's it, the terminology might not be a contact for example some crms i was using a tool called v tiger for years it's kind of obscure it's an open source crm um which which is self-hosted i believe they have a cloud hosted option but i self-hosted it which means that you download a script from the internet you upload that to your own server and that's where it sits, i.e. it's not a, it's not really a SaaS uh it's not a SaaS product. You don't log into salesforce.com or it's not a it's not a C name, you don't go crm.yourdomain.com and it's really pointing to the CRM company's uh servers. It's actually something sitting on your server. I use VTiger for years and it's proved it. it's it's a fun little thing to do having a self-hosted CRM if you really want to get under the hood. Uh, there's another option called Sugar CRM. I'm not going to actually go into uh, Sugar CRM has been forked into Sweet CRM. Um, it's it's not really it's uh, deprecated. I'm not really going to go going to go into uh, self-hosted CRMs because really for a business of any kind of maturity they're not suitable options. You need someone on site to administer them. Um, Certainly, when I moved from stuff like VTiger into HubSpot, Agile, Salesforce, exploring these different CRMs, um, it was like going from the black and white uh, talk movie era into the into into Hollywood. Basically, that's the difference. They're way way more powerful and glitzy and everything. Uh, but yeah, so don't don't look into those. But it, it could be a cool project. So that's just explain if you come across open source self hosted is really the terminology you'd be looking at there. And that means you're going to have to put it on your own server, basically. Um, so what Yeah, CRM basically, you know, I, I, I got sidetracked there for a second, because in VTiger, the terminology, I believe is, uh, you know, leads, contact, opportunities, companies, you essentially want to um, create a label for what stage people are at in your sales funnel. So you could have people that you're just sending out a cold prospecting emailing to email to. That's really just a lead. Okay, it's top of funnel. It, it they, you, they haven't even responded. They probably haven't opened your opened your email yet. No indication of interest. You're not talking to them. You're not qualifying them. I'm gonna go a bit more slowly when I'm using you know kind of terms in this world. Qualifying is when you evaluate if this is really somebody that you know can pay the kind of rates you are charging if they're a good fit for both parties which is impo important but at the early stage of the sales fund you're looking at kind of unqualified leads that are that are just being captured um so that's the terminology in v tiger and other providers might have it differently i've used over the course of the years uh, a bunch of crms ranging from v tiger as i mentioned sugar uh, Sweet CRM, uh, Pipedrive, Salesforce, Agile, HubSpot. That's a very partial list. Those are those are the ones I've used for you know a while, like a couple of years. And uh, there's other ones I've 
tried out, conducted a trial for it and didn't like them that much. Um, there are tons of CRMs out there. Um, but I kind of encourage people to stick to the main one for simply because if you run into help, it's easier to find help. It's, it's easier if you run into difficulties, you can find outsourced help and you've, you've just got a bigger user base, basically. Bigger extension library, better integrations, etc. Um, now, a CRM is really just a relation, relational database. So you have leads, you email them from within, within the CRM, that email gets tracked. So you can have multiple users, i.e. what I was saying before about delegating email access and you're, you're working with a VA, a virtual assistant, slash, you, slash you've taken on a salesperson. Uh, you can have that person as a user in your CRM. You can assign them leads, i.e. it's your responsibility to contact. They'll get an email notification. Uh, you can have them sending out in your in your name, which is pretty cool. Um, but they'll have a unique username and you'll be able to see that they and not you sent out that email. So really, if you're one person, um, you can be more that you can you can you can appear as one person, but look, you know, in, in actuality, have a couple of people working on your team as a freelancer. And I just have to tell people that haven't done that before. It's pretty cool when you have someone in a different time zone sending out emails as you on your behalf and the whole process from the client's leads perspective is invisible i.e they just see emails from you coming to them you start getting replies from people you never actually emailed and you never actually even researched the company uh i'm, I'm saying this because you know presumably you've told your your virtual assistant your qual your basic qualification criteria i.e what a good lead is um but that's good it's kind of the feeling of scaling and growing basically if you get to that point um so at its core, a CRM looks like an online tool where you will you will capture a lead. You will be able to email them from within the CRM. So it's it's important that you know the um, details of your mail server. If you're using G Suite, that's very easy to find online. However, I encourage people doing mass emailing to look for a dedicated emailing marketing SMTP server. So just to just to briefly, I'm segueing a bunch here into kind of tangential topics related to CRMs, but you have. Um, SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol, is the outbound side of an email of, of emailing basically. So, you know, on the inbound side, it's IMAP now. We used to have something called POP3 back in the day. Um, different servers for receiving and sending email. Um, you will get an SMTP. You, if you're sending email, you have an SMTP server. That's that's a certitude. Um, but there are dedicated SMTP services for email marketing. The one I use a lot is uh, SendGrid. Amazon AWS has a tool called SES as part of the AWS package. That's for big volume transactional uh, transactional emails. Um, yeah, SendGrid is great. There's, there's really a bunch if you just type in uh, email marketing SMTP into Google. The advantage of this is that you're dealing with companies where delivering outbound email is their entire bread and butter. That's simply what they do. They're therefore experts in deliverability um, and they can help you configure your, uh, you know, adding stuff like DN, D, D, DKIM, SBF, uh, making sure everything from a technical standpoint is perfectly configured in order that the huge amount of time you're spending on prospecting that your emails are not simply winding up in somebody's spam folder because you do not want that clearly. Um, so with your with your CRM, you, you can email from within the CRM. It's patched up to your SMTP server. So as I said, you can use what you have, whether that's Office 365 or, or you know, or you're, you're, you're running your own email server, you're, you have a technical department, or you're using something like SendGrid, in which case uh, you'll have to generate an API, API key for yourself and put in the, uh, you know, the secret key as your password. Whatever approach you're taking, it's connected and you can send. Now you can also get where a lot of CRMs receive inbound emails. Uh, I personally do not do this. So I use the CRM simply for outbound stuff. And when people email back, um, I take care of all that stuff manually myself. Okay, that's at my level of scale. If you're at a bigger level of scale, you'll want to be um, you know, routing the inbound email, i.e. you'll give your CRM access to, uh, with HubSpot, there is, there's, there's, you have the ability to say there's a separate SMTP and IMAP server. Uh, so you can use SendGrid for outbound and G Suite for inbound, or you can say just an easy, you know, one or two click uh, authentication process in which you say I'm using entirely um, G Suite. You can send as me, you can put my inbound emails into the CRM. So, you know, that's, that's a great option if you're at that level of scale and you want, so, you know, because an inbound email, it might be assigned to a few different uh, sales agents on your team. Um, 
but you can also go with that approach. So CRM sending email, uh, receiving email, and then each contact really is an account on the CRM. So again, I'm generalizing because this isn't this isn't just Salesforce or HubSpot or Pipedrive I'm talking about. I'm talking about CRMs in general. So you have each contact is gonna be an account page. You can append notes. Remember I'm talking about a team here at work. So right, you can say, I had a call with this, with this account. Some CRMs have the ability to actually call the contact through the CRM and automatically append the recording. That obviously requires some kind of VOIP integration, whether that's a third party VOIP service or you're piping into something like a PBX system like Asterix. Um, that's if, if, if you've seen, if you've been part of a CRM team where that is there, it's very, very cool. You can see, you know, someone actually called through the CRM and that is recorded, appended as an MP3 to the record. So you can see literally every touch point with that customer. The, um, you know, how, how the lead came to you, maybe they completed a landing page, your outbound email marketing efforts, the call, of, as a call you had with that lead, it's all there on one page. Um, so certainly for bigger organizations, uh, that's something very cool. The other major thing, so this is what a CRM is. So just, just let's take a step back for a moment and compare this to your writing emails one by one, okay? You send an email, if you wanna see, you know, I often, when you're dealing with a bunch of leads, it's easy to lose track of where things stand with each account, who's been followed up with, what you said to who. So you're probably searching your inbox. Oh yeah, yeah, this, this is what I quoted. He's at this stage, at this stage. Oops, I forgot to contact them. Now. With CRMs, you can do stuff like set reminders, automatically set reminders uh, to follow up with someone who you've indicated is a warm lead. And that's that's typically a default function. You can also, in most CRMs, configure custom fields. So if your organization has unique uh, terminology, taxonomy for describing what stage people are at in the funnel, then you can you know totally graft that onto the CRM over there. Um, so doing this by inbox would be really messy, right? And like, how do you, you call the person? Are you gonna, like, how are you gonna handle that? You're gonna use, let's say you use a call recording app on your Android, automatic call recorders. When I know about, I rarely, rarely record calls. And of course, you must be aware of the of the uh, legality in your jurisdiction, if it's legal, if you have to, sometimes you have to inform the party. I, I almost never record phone calls unless it's an interview and I tell the person, I'm in, I'm recording this, are you okay? So you're not going to be in the habit of recording your every conversation with a potential client. And even if you did, what, you put that in Google Drive and the email, it, it would be completely messy. While I am saying that, there's another type of CRM, just to mention briefly, um, that is an all-in-the-inbox CRM, i.e. it's uh, typically I'm thinking of a G Suite uh, marketplace slash app um, that kind of appends itself. So a lot of the big CRMs, for example, Salesforce offer Chrome extensions that kind of build up on the functionality of uh, Google, of, of G Suite. And, you know, they allow, they literally bring the Salesforce into, into Gmail. So you can like add this email exchange as into the CRM from a sidebar in the actual Gmail window. That's another class of CRM that I would say is kind of uh, graft on CRMs. It's not it's not a real word. It's the way I think of them. I, I, I don't personally like them because, you know, they're platform specific. You're using Gmail uh, now. What if you're not doing that in the future? You're maybe you're accessing it from your from your phone. Maybe you're accessing it from someone else's laptop. I like CRMs that really, really live in, you know, CRM land there, whether that's self-hosted or it's on your uh um, it's on a SaaS provider's website. You access them via the CRM login and that's your CRM. Inbound email, outbound email, or both, it's all in there. It's in one place. Uh, it doesn't matter whether whether that, whether you're looking at it from a phone or a computer. It's very, very scalable. Um, so that's, that's just a quick tangent on what I think about these Chrome extension CRMs. I don't like them. Um, okay, what else does the CRM do? So we covered, you know, that there's contacts, you can move stuff into different stages, you can have a company and, you know, attribute all the contacts to that company. Uh, this is, again, typical stuff. You can configure reminders. And the final thing I will say about what CRMs do is automation slash workflows. This is probably the biggest value add of CRMs, in my opinion. So you're creating a bunch of leads, okay? you are identifying a few agencies that might be a good fit and you're leaving the leads there. Now, you could set yourself reminders to uh, to follow up after three days, 
much easier is to configure an automation uh, which will say that if you create a lead and you don't log contact, i.e. they didn't express interest, uh, there's no inbound email received into the CRM or you didn't you know, label them as you got a response, whatever functionality your CRM offers, uh, you can create uh, automation. So you, know, you might say, I want to send this email saying, hi, X, X being company, just to follow up on my email from three slash five days ago, whatever the case may be, and that. So there's automatic follow-up. Um, I can't really say too much about automation because the ways in which you can automate these interactions is pretty much infinite. Just to give some examples within, um, within for example, HubSpot slash Agile CRMs, there's a nice diagrammatic editor over there in which you can literally create arrows and drag actions and create time delays, i.e. create a lead after three days follow up. Um, after three days, uh, if there is no, you know, follow up, assign this tag to the entity. Um, in a bigger organization, if after 10 days there is no entity, maybe you want to hand that lead over automatically to this user. Okay. And that user will get the lead, get an email notification and say, this is like cold uh, lead and it's not being followed up with. And, you know, the, you, you can take that over. I, I'm, re I'm really keeping it as general as I can. Uh, that's how that's really what automation is how it works when you're looking at the biggest CRMs I am thinking all really all the time here about Salesforce you know there's even internal languages and coding and you can really get into a whole world there of hiring outsourced Salesforce developers um, you know who will know that language and be able to actually code really really incredibly customized workflows and automations in 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 the CRM for you that's all I want to say. As I said, I'm trying to keep it general and not go into any specific uh, specific provider. Just to recap, a CRM basically is a way, customer relationship management system. First of all, some, by the way, have little add-ons. Some have like, you can build out a knowledge base in them. You can build out a ticket support system. You can create landing pages with them. Um, these are these are not really core CRM functions and there are, um, you know, specific providers for all those things. So you might find um, get response. OK, just just to take a CRM that I covered uh, right about this week. They're really an email marketing platform. They offer CRM with their top three tiers and they also allow you to create landing pages. They also allow you to, I think, if I remember correctly, to create a help desk. A lot of CRMs try to offer as much uh, functionality uh, as possible, sometimes even kind of venturing into the ERP space, ERP being enterprise resource planning, another category of enterprise software. Um, so you might see a CRM and get confused saying, well, how come there's a help desk and how come there is, you know, ticketing and why, why, why can you build landing pages through the CRM? Those are kind of add-ons that not every CRM offers, but many do. But at its core, a CRM is a, is a tool for uh, logging uh, customer interactions in a centralized manner in, in such a way that you can do it as part of a team and not as just yourself. Um, the work automation is a big, big thing. Marketing automation is a huge field and most CRMs offer some kind of workflow slash automation process. Uh, some have little nice add-ons like making calls through the CRM. A lot of CRMs, I'm thinking about Pipedrive here, have very extensive marketplaces where there's literally an add-on slash integration for everything. Um, many have their own APIs, e.g. Pipedrive have their own API. So if you want to get customized and start uh, connect, patching that up to different services, not in their marketplace slash integration library, you may do so via the API. Of course, that requires you have some kind of development know-how slash developers at your disposal. And uh, a lot of them have calendars. So you can create a company-wide calendar, set appointments with clients, set reminders, transfer appointments, the whole the, the whole stuff. So that's basically in 25 minutes or less because it's 24 minutes and 10 seconds. And I'll try to wrap this up within this minute. That is what CRMs are. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about, I'm going to create a blog post on the DSR Ghostwriting blog to just... Uh, put the salient points that I discussed here into writing. Um, there's a contact form there and I would be happy to provide uh, just any additional thoughts, but I'm not guiding towards a specific product because I'm not a CRM consultant, it's not my job, but you should certainly, if you're not already using one, uh, get at least a basic CRM uh, just so that your client uh, outreach is not simply living in your inbox. Ah, I was going to say one thing and I have, to, I have to say it's one thing I like about this before I wrap up is just that it's cool to be able to do things in your own manner, i.e., what I'm thinking about here is open um, open rate tracking, CTR, click-through rate tracking. Some CRMs open this as well, they offer this. They'll give you a little pop-up. 
in the CRM slash in the browser extension if someone opens your email. I like the fact that CRMs are very customizable. There's many of them on the market. So I do not use open rate tracking, but that can be configured as an automation. Um, I find it invasive and I don't use it for that reason. Um, but I like the, I really, really like the fact that you can use CRMs as you see fit in a way that is authentic with your unique philosophy of how you envision marketing should be conducted. So that's just a little addendum. Okay, until next time, dsrghostwriting.com, the contact form is there, and I look forward to discussing more ways in which tech and automation can help further your freelance or small business.